Thanks, Julian. Call meeting to order at 540. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from May? I'll make the motion to approve the minutes from May. I'll second, all in favor? Aye. Anybody have any questions about the financial lists or vouchers? And if not, is there a motion to approve? Make the motion that we approve the financial statement and checklist for May. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a motion to approve the payment of the CAFO bill for 9238 for car and building insurance. It looks like it's about an eight or nine hundred dollar increase from last year. Is it annual? Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to approve the Farm building insurance from Keiko. Second. All in favor? All right. comments? Setting of the tax rates. Okay, so <clears throat> KPI, the monthly report from, that should be KPLA, sorry. KPLA? Um, no, no, that's KDLA. That's no, right. KD. Sorry. <laughs> it's KDLA. Um, so it, they redress the setting of tax rates and the new uh, procedures. So that was, I would highly recommend read that and we'll go over them next month when we're a little bit closer to having to do that. I also included in your packet um, the <clears throat> summary of real property tax rule changes for our county for this year, 2021, and for last year, so you can compare those numbers. And then I also uh, included our last year rates. So you you can have time to look at those over and compare those. And I can send those out again. And we're going to be setting tax rates. Which is next month? Um, if it's not in July, latest, I think it's August. Tina Browning likes to have them done in August. So we'll try to get them done before the members come in. And so on. Um, so I'm not sure how you want to do discuss applications for our new trustees. Um, I think because we're going to be discussing individuals, I think that I think we can go to closed session and then open it to make a decision if we want to just go ahead and submit names or to call them in next month and interview them. So okay, I make a motion to move to closed session to discuss board appointments. I'll second. Does Julian need to start reporting? Yeah, Julian. Do we need to make a motion to do that? Does that need to be? Oh, yeah. Well, when we're going to first, we'll open up the meeting. We'll make a motion to motion. move to open session from closed session to discuss the um, names for board submissions. All in favor. So we need to make a motion to submit these names or do you need to put on the record? Um, I would make a motion to submit the names. And today we're going to submit David. Yeah, I'll make a motion to submit uh, David Eddy and Bethany Johnson Carter for the first position and Angela Anderson and Crystal Miller for the second position. Second. Second. You second. Second. All in favor? Um. Okay. All righty. Um, so the library is doing pretty well. Um, summer reading program is, is doing really, really well. We're getting uh, our dog park, um, our dog uh, show brought in about 250 people. At Trimble County Park. It's a big crowd in the pictures I saw. Yeah. Awesome. So that's something that we might continue for next year. And it fills a void for we don't have a perfect rec person. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the, you know, people are submitting their uh, reading logs online and that's going really well. And so we're really pleased with how things are, are going. Um, state restrictions are pretty much up. So, 
we're still sequestering items for three days. That probably will be fading away in July. And um, we're still, we still have our computers separated out and everything, but we're hoping to get back by uh, July or in August. So we will be back to normal soon. Does anybody have any questions about how things are going? That. Oh, I did. Um, so our e, um, St. Elizabeth with our employee assist program during staff meeting, um, a representative from that company met with staff and explained the program. And that program will start July 1st, 2021. So I think it'll be a good, good thing for our staff members. So any other questions about where we are? Okay. Our work, uh, ready for workforce ready grant is going well. Um, we've almost all of our almost all of our laptops and hotspots for that are are checked out. Partnerships with Kentucky and Works and um, JCTC has really strengthened just because of that little program there. We're getting a lot of help from them. Um, some things with the building, we've got a few things going on. As you can tell, we've got fans going in here, so our HVAC is out on this side of the building again. Directors, staff, meeting room, and the kids' activity room. Um, Let's be honest, we were due. <laughs> it was three it's months. 10,000, but yeah, it's been over three months. <laughs> um, just got the bill as for services done in March. They had my wrong email address. So I was kind of sticker shocked when I, it was over $8,000. I did contest some of the charges and they were, they took five hours of labor off, which labor is $107 an hour. So I'm looking into other companies, um, reaching out. suggestion. Okay. Holly, eating and doing in Madison. Uh, John that owns the business teaches at Ivy Tech. So I feel like he's, I thought that we had said that there weren't a whole lot of people that knew about mm -hmm. this kind of system. system. But um, in talking to Jeff tonight, he said that they, that John teaches over there. So he should know about all kinds of yeah. issues. I mean, we have geothermal and it's hard to find somebody to a service geothermal and they do and they do an excellent job. At so. LG and E or at no, home? Home. Oh. Okay. okay. I'll check in with them. I also got another um the library director in Boone County has just they're building libraries right and left because the big Amazon plant is being built there. Lots of tax money coming in. And she actually has a lot of connections with HVAC people that can maybe become an evaluator system because this is not energy efficient. Efficient. We're spending this much every, every year. year. Every year. <laughs> every every year. year we could have bought a whole new system. I think last year was in maybe we could, <laughs> or the year 2020. Well, I think if we have to replace the units, it's going to be close to, I mean, it's going to be very, very expensive. Yeah, my new home was 7,600 just for my unit. Wow, so you can imagine what it's yeah. going to be for an industrial unit. But these but toys, considering what we're paying in payers every year, every that's year, true. yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> we're having to replace those coils, and that's kind of like every two. It's, it's almost like it's an outdated system. And the Freon isn't that that's super expensive. It's the Freon, yes. And our I just replaced ours at home, and we had to replace it. It was fifteen years old because they don't even make it anymore. So it's eventually going to come to that, I'm sure. To where yeah. they don't even make that kind anymore. So from Walker Mechanical, they keep saying it's the coils and it's the Michigushi problem and there's not very many other options for this unit. And what's the problem is the, all the ventilation is geared to this unit and you're kind of stuck. I want to get some more opinions. Mm -hmm. So, and they've gone through a lot of turnover like a lot of companies this last year and our PMs aren't do, being done uh, consistently. And I'm just, uh, hopefully we, we tried other people before and it's crawling back and begging her to take us back, but we'll see if we can find somebody else. So, so otherwise they worked on it and we spent that much money and it still isn't working. That, well, that was a heating problem. The, we had a pipe that one of the fittings had um, come loose and leaked, slowly leaked the refrigerant out. The problem with the system is, is that they both communicate together and compensate. And by the time you, realize it codes, the refrigerant is almost gone. So it's at critical mass at that point. There needs to be more of a 
something. If it's so smart and technical, why can't it say, hey, there's a leak, <laughs> you know? Right. So that's my understanding of the unit. So, but this, um, the invoice for, for March, I got them down to $7,899.64. So. Make a motion. Hey, Walker, the a second. All in favor? Um, we're pushing the pavilion uh, back to July. Our excavator, because of all that rain in end of May and June, has just pushed everything back. Um, the park branch, we are um, still working uh, for quotes on internet services, meeting with the inspector next week uh, in looking into options to boost the signal. And also there's an ARPA grant coming available hopefully soon that we can request funding for um, some equipment and internet services. So we, there's a possibility we can get that up this, this year. Um, went to Apple Vessel meeting on Tuesday and they're in need of san hand sanitation stations. We have three, four of them on site and a ton of hand sanitizer. And if we could allow them to use them, that would save them a couple hundred bucks. Okay. Your approval on that. I'll make a motion that we have the Apple Festival to borrow our hand sanitizing stations for the Apple Festival. All right, so there's also another uh, funding opportunity. It's called the Emergency Connectivity Fund, which is available to schools and libraries. Talk to the school to see what they were doing as far as hotspots for the school and they're they're um, writing a grant for 200 hotspots to try to get connectivity it's my understanding it's through t-mobile though which is horrible service um, so we can we have an opportunity to get 100 percent funding for this for our hotspots we can continue the 25 hotspots for the next year if you want uh, i think there's also so, some room to um, Add some Chromebooks for younger users, uh, for homeschoolers and teens, that we could check those out too. And uh, of course, under a parent's guidance. And when we give it to them, we're not giving them a thousand dollar laptop, we're giving them a three or four hundred dollar device. So, so I got some quotes for that. Let's talk about the hotspots first. I will say we are still trying to get about 17 hotspots back from people we've called, we've sent, we're sending out letters um, today. And um, this quote is with that in mind that if we had to replace those hotspots and think them back. So they're disconnected, they're not able to use them, they just won't return. But they just haven't returned. Yes. Yeah. I will say that those people who don't return or they come back damaged, they're not eligible for any checkout for the next year. And that's being explained to them. And we had another full page of people who are on the waiting list. But they are doing a virtual option for the school next year, but they are encouraging people to come back. Um, so the devices would be $40 a piece. That would be about $700 for the all the devices we would need. The lines are $43 uh, a month with the filtering software. So grand total for the year is about $9,500. That is 100% refundable, but we would have to come up with the money up front. <laughs> How do you guys feel about that? I'm, I'm torn. I'm like, why would we do this and send <laughs> all these hotspot sales but not give back? But at the same time, that's really just $40 is a cost of two books. Mm -hmm. And we get that all the time. So. And we would, how long would it take before we would get the money back? I don't know what the reimbursement period is on this. I can't, I don't want to have to look more into that. It's through the USAC. It's, okay. so I would, I would file for the funding through the USAC or the E-rate portal and then be reimbursed all at the same time. I would have to file a bare form. It, it might be at the end of the year because I will want those bills for Verizon that we paid that bill for. So I'm guessing it's at the end of the year we would get that reimbursement for the internet service. And we have to pay for it for so long. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we wouldn't want to do that if we're going to get it all back. I, I just, I 
So it's a break. Yeah. Service okay. to the community. You've got that much demand still. Okay. We do. How many total, uh, like out of this amount, how many have not come back? Um, we, we're still waiting on 17. So out of 25. Gosh, that's a wow, lot, isn't it? That's wow. So that's what I'm saying. Oh, if they're, they, but we have the potential, and the first 25 hot spots that came out of our packet. So with this grant, we have a potential to replace those and not spend any money. And these are being released to adults? Yes. Okay. So is there a way for us to do a, I mean, you said you've sent letters and things. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking of sending letters. Um, how long are they allowed to keep them in one checkout? We did it for because it was for a month at a time. Um, right. And they were renewed every two weeks. Oh, and okay. then we checked to see if they were still in the program, still progressing. And that worked pretty well. I think there was one or two people we just couldn't get word from the school that we had one girl drop out. and. I think another one there were some issues with, but for the most part, everybody was confirmed each month that is my understanding that they were still progressing and doing work. So some of this is transportation issue. Are they all uh, well, not mean, being returned? I mean, we've got the library mobile going around. Can we not send out somebody to the house and say, hey, we've been trying to contact you. Can you please, we'd like to you can return yeah. the Wi-Fi. And we're going to, we're going to get on that. Um, are any of them returning students or they're, are, they're, they weren't all seniors, right? Um, there might have been a couple. So the rest of them were all returning? I would think that they would they, not want to. They might not have a Some of them still be needing them for summer work. We have because to, then yeah, they gave that option. The internet right? The Didn't they? We Didn't have the school to. give the option of, of the so. ones who were having hard times? almost not passing that they could do some summer work and so, yeah i think they did we have so. two students that are um approved for full summer work education um hotspot use um they're doing an ingenuity program um the school did do a summer uh, program and it ended tomorrow tomorrow it's already it's tomorrow. Ended. Oh, okay. so there was and they all their work had to be done in school they weren't allowed to take their devices home so it so that is not the problem. Okay. No. All right. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna. It's up front. We might not get these devices done, but it gives us another year to evaluate, and then we're basically replacing the ones we got out of our pocket for free. Mm -hmm. We're not really adding potentially. Any yes. Could be. Potentially, yeah. And and funding those lines. So we do have the five hotspot uh, workforce grant hotspots that are already funded through a different grant. I can't apply for funding for that with this and piggyback off of it. So I'm, I will apply for the full 25 lines again to get reimbursement for that. But these are going to be new lines mm -hmm. where it's, it's cheaper for us to just cut the cut the lines off and start new ones because our hotspots are cheaper under that process. So I would say if you're going to send somebody to these people's homes to try to get it don't send them by themselves Maybe a team effort. yeah yeah and we already have identified identified a few that are on our routes and we know and it's just a transportation issue so i i think we'll get a lot more back once we send out these letters and they know that they they're not eligible for a year they won't well they won't be able to do technology Hotspots to the you know the programs for so. so I would just need a motion if you guys want to go for that. I would say maybe up to ten thousand dollars on it, just in case there's not any other charges. There will be charges for like cases and extra cords and things like that for the program. Okay. So the first one would be ten thousand. I'll make a motion to approve up to ten thousand for hotspots and internet service for 21-22 fiscal year. I'll 
So the second thing, this would be a new device for us. We'd have to learn how to manage it. I think the easiest way to manage it is through Kajit. Um, they provide the Chromebook and it's a one-time fee for the internet service as well. Um, 5G, Verizon internet, but it's limited. They can't just you know, go off and do gaming on it and stuff and streaming. So once they, they use their data, they're done. Um, the cost for the devices per year and for the internet is roughly about $3,000. I'm going off last year's book because I cannot get a hold of the Jeep. Um, they're so busy, everybody's asking for help for them. And then there's an admin fee of one time $700. So that total is 30, about $3,500 for the Jeep Chromebooks with Verizon internet for the year. Um, I got another quote from Verizon. They also do Chromebooks, but, and they said that their filtering software was SIPA compliant, but I don't think it is because it looks like the software they use, we can only turn it on and off. And it actually, we need to be able to filter on that. So the, the quote for Verizon is, is a little bit more, it's a little bit better Chromebook, but I just don't think it's gonna qualify. So Kajit has the, uh, filtering the mm -hmm. device. Yes. They work directly with schools and they're expensive, but their system is really easy to use and manage. And that's why schools go with them a lot. Um, since I don't have a current quote, I'd like for the board to um, approve up to um, $5,100. Um, trust me to make the best decision on that. If it's not set up client, I'm not going to. We can't use it and we won't get funding for it. Yeah, it won't qualify for funding. Is there, and this is out of pocket for us. This is not upfront out grant. of pocket. Is this reimbursable grant? All of it. As a, with the, uh, with every every it. Okay. It. And it's just like end of fiscal year, we get reimbursed for that. It, yeah, it might be in the school year for that. Okay. So. Go ahead, please. I make a motion that we go with the, the Kajit Chromebooks and Verizon Internet. And we allow up to fifty-one hundred mm -hmm. for that. A second. On there. Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, we also got our contract from Lib Synergy for tech services for next year. That includes our main branch with Milton. It doesn't include the price of the park branch yet. So, um, because we don't have anything out there yet. So, um, the quote came back at $10,970.24. And that is the same price as last year. So there was no increase in cost. I make a motion, a motion to approve your contract with Lib Synergy. I'll second. I'll be. Um, we just found stats to go through. Um, see, in May, our visits were down a little bit, but we didn't have any programs. So um, that's, I think, pretty good numbers for not having a lot of programs. Our programmers take the month off to, to get ready for summer reading program. Um, circulation, um, we're at about 31,000 use as circulation numbers for 2020. So I think we're gonna be, gonna be close to last year's. Wireless usage is uh, for the main branch is increasing a little bit as people come back. Um, computer, computer use is, um, you can see it's pretty low, um, but it's, it's increasing as people come into use and to do things. A lot of people have their own devices now, so. Databases, the numbers are there for Hoopla and Overdrive. Um, pretty consistent with those numbers. Pebble Go dropped off, I think, because kids aren't in school and they're not homeschooling. And, um, brain Fuse, of course, it was, that's our mentoring service. It's at zero and we're gonna not. I've already told them. We're just gonna continue. Yeah, I've already told them we're not gonna continue that. That's all I have. Um, mm -hmm. I do. Do you guys have any other questions or concerns? Okay. 
dignity than under the circumstances of the COVID and the all of the upheaval that we've had for the last few months. So it seems like everything's normal. We're going to be seeing some positive changes and come out of it. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. A second. In favor? No. Is it 16? That clock is wrong. It's 16. 16. Michelle, you seconded? <laughs>